In London, Occupy protesters have taken over the vacant Old Street Magistrate Court about a mile away from another encampment at the St. Paul's Cathedral. They say they will use the building to hold trials of the 1%. Protesters are currently fighting to keep their camp open as London's High Court continues hearings on evicting protesters from the site. Protesters from Occupy camps across the U.K. are facing similar efforts, and over the weekend, many of them gathered in Edinburgh for a conference to talk about the challenges facing their camps and ways in which they could collaborate. Representatives from Birmingham, London, Sheffield, Leeds, Glasgow, and many other cities had frank discussions about their problems, including pressing issues of camps overwhelmed by people with mental health issues, alcohol and drug addiction, and violence against women. FSRN's Tom Allen reports. There's a carnival atmosphere in the building, once known as the Forest Café, now renamed the People's Café and the venue for a conference of delegates from all the UK Occupy camps. Before the serious discussions begin, people are celebrating the occupation of this space. It was Edinburgh's principal radical art space until it was closed three months ago. At the next day's meeting, people gather to discuss ideas in a large circle. The meetings are long and involved, with delegates sharing their stories and using hand signals to indicate approval or rejection of ideas. There are many topics to cover, but camp security and surviving the rapid advance of winter seem foremost in people's minds. We are providing an enormous number of tools for all the other occupiers, current and future. Simon Bailey is from Occupy Birmingham. He says that their camp has maintained good relations with both the locals and with police after agreeing to move the camp from the site of a planned Christmas market in the city centre. We've got quite a unique location adjoining four tower blocks with approximately 500 residents. They all overlook the site so everybody sees we're there and everybody has to pass through our site to get home. The people have been very, very, very warm and generous. Food has been plentiful from the residents. Donations have really, they've kept us alive. But there have been problems with camp safety in Birmingham. We've had all sorts of trouble with um, more, some of the more dangerous elements in society, some of, some of the alcoholics that roam the streets have come and been violent towards us. So we've had to, we've had to put aside some of our planning in order just to survive. Ruth from Occupy London says that all the camps are struggling with the same problem. The camps have become a place of safety and a place of food and shelter for people who are homeless and a lot of people have a lot of um, problems that the society at large has caused and not dealt with, you know, including drug addictions, alcohol problems, mental health problems and basically the Occupy occupies are trying to do what the bigger society has not been able to do and it's very hard it's very hard to deal with that in glasgow the situation proved even more serious in october a young woman staying at the camp was sexually assaulted the city center location was subsequently relocated and later disbanded i spoke to a protester from the camp who wished to remain anonymous many people thought we could control the situation We could know who was dangerous, keep an eye on it, not to call the police, not to call the social services, just be dealing with things. I'm not saying that we knew somebody was going to be raped and we just thought we were going to handle it. We never thought that was going to happen. Delegates at the conference hope that by sharing these problems and by sharing the best ideas and practices from other sites, they can make the camps safer and more secure throughout the country. Again, Ruth from Occupy London. We shared our experience and the different means that people have found of dealing with that, from inviting uh, people from trade unions or outside organisations or just willing volunteers to come down and help welcome people from the public, to help with uh, making sure that the camp is safe, uh, to uh, things like having whistles so that if somebody gets in trouble they can blow a whistle and everybody should come and help together to defend ourselves. Perhaps even more important is that we've formed a cross-camp, cross-site women's group, uh, which will have our own web page where women will be able to discuss the safety issues from a women's point of view and the sexism that we face on the camps because we are finding that the camps are becoming more and more male. 
In the safe and warm environment of the People's Café, participants are also sharing their ideas and decisions with the wider world. For two days, a media team armed with laptops and a projector have kept a flow of minutes appearing online, sometimes streaming video directly from the conference. Jamie Mann is a journalism student and part of the Occupy Edinburgh media team. Well, I think it, it largely has the heart of what um, the Forest Cafe had, which was a community art space that was um, open to anyone, largely run by volunteers, and it's, it's provided a fantastic meeting space for us at Occupy Edinburgh, especially because of the electricity and, and getting Wi-Fi connections because for the media team. It means we can actually use laptops rather than at the camp, just writing things down and then going home and then writing up online. It's, it's made the whole process a lot more efficient. But the People's Café looks likely to be a short-lived experiment, at least in this building. Unlike in England, there are no squatters' rights in Scotland, and the owners have secured an eviction order. As for Occupy Edinburgh, after a warm weekend, it's back to their camp in St Andrews Square to continue their campaign through the long, cold Scottish winter. Participants from the other UK cities are returning to their camps as well, with new friends and fresh ideas. Tom Allen, FSRN, Edinburgh.